So, you've heard about something called ESOS and that some organisations are required to have an energy audit. It could be difficult to understand the ESOS requirements, so this episode is designed to take away some of the complexity in understanding the ESOS requirements and how they might apply to your organisation. Sounds good? Let's take a look! Welcome to EMS Mastery, where we give you the strategies and tactics to master environmental management and sustainability. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Andrew Marlow. This episode will look at the regulatory requirements supporting the Energy Savings Opportunity Scheme, or ESOS, as a mandatory requirement for certain organisations within the UK to calculate and report on their energy usage and opportunities for energy saving to their board or in the case of limited liability partnerships to the partners. So let's take a brief look at what legislation supports the Energy Savings Opportunity Scheme, who are required to comply with the requirements, what is required including the notification process, who are the regulators and what can we expect in Phase 3 of ESOS later this year and onwards? First, what is the legislation that requires reporting of energy usage and uh, energy savings opportunities? The Energy Savings Opportunity Scheme is required under the Energy Savings Opportunity Scheme Regulations 2014 which have been amended by two further regulations. The Energy Savings Opportunity Scheme Amendment Regulations 2015, which corrects some uh, drafting errors in the original 2014 regulations. And the Energy Saving Opportunity Scheme Amendment EU Exit Regulations 2018, which addresses failures in retained EU law to operate effectively arising from the withdrawal of the UK from the European Union, such as the use of ISO 50001-2018, which is the latest version of that international standard, and the Euro thresholds used in the original 2014 regulations. The ESOS regulations apply to all large limited liability partnerships, LLPs, and large companies. Here, it is important to understand what is meant by large for companies and LLPs. The qualifying conditions are met when a company or LLP in a qualification year meets or satisfies one of the following criteria. The number of employees is 250 or more, or turnover is 44 million or more, and the annual balance sheet is 38 million or more. The reference qualification year for the current phase three is 31st of December 2022, which is the date for determining whether you meet one of the above criteria on or in the prior 12 months and will need to comply with the ESOS requirements. Additionally, any company required to comply with the ESOS regulations within a corporate group is likely to render all of the UK registered companies as being required to comply with the ESOS regulations. So it can have far reaching implications beyond just one part of a group of companies. Currently, there are just under 8,000 organisations that participated in ESOS during the Phase 2, which was between 2015 and 2019. If you're getting value out of this episode, please click on the like button. And if you want to see more environmental and sustainability videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell to receive notifications of new episodes. 
A typical process for completing a compliant ESOS energy audit would be to measure your total energy consumption and identify areas of significant energy consumption. The choice of the available routes for compliance should be considered, which I will deal with shortly, and these must include the areas of significant energy consumption to ensure that they're covered totally within your chosen route for compliance. In terms of a compliant ESOS energy audit, you need to appoint an ESOS energy assessor, which can be an internal or external person. The resultant ESOS report and its findings is required to be reviewed by one or more board level directors, or in the case of LLPs, by a partner, followed by a notification of ESOS compliance online. In terms of choosing a route to compliance, there are four options to consider. You can choose accredited ISO 50001 certification, display energy certificates, green deal assessments, or an ESOS compliant energy audit completed by a qualified and recognised ESOS lead assessor. In the case of accredited ISO 50001 certification, display energy certificates and green deal assessments, you must ensure that they cover all of the organisation's energy use, otherwise an ESOS compliant energy audit is required to cover the remaining or outstanding energy usage. If you need more information, the Environment Agency has published its online guidance on complying with the Energy Savings Opportunity Scheme, which provides information on the routes to compliance with specific emphasis on the compliant ESOS energy audit process. So, what must be reported? The Environment Agency is the UK Scheme Administrator for ESOS and they provide a portal for entering notification to confirm your compliance with the ESOS requirements. The notification does not require any specific details to be submitted, so for example for the compliant ESOS energy audit route it is not a requirement to submit your significant energy consumption or energy saving opportunities or for the ISO 50001 certification route details of the certification body's audits or certificate. Additionally there are optional questions to assist the Environment Agency to understand the operation of the ESOS regulations. The notification must be submitted to the Environment Agency by the deadline specified for each specific phase. Currently for Phase 3 that covers a compliance period from the 6th of December 2019 to the 5th of December 2023. The compliance date, the final date for the notification to be submitted, is the 5th of December 2023. The Environment Agency acts as the UK Scheme Administrator for the ESOS regulations and is responsible for guidance, communications, the running of a help desk and collection of notifications of compliance throughout the UK. The regulators are individually responsible for checking compliance and enforcement activities in relation to qualifying participants based on the location of the organisation's registered office in England by the Environment Agency, for Scotland by the Scottish Environment Protection Agency, in Wales by the National Resource Wales, for Northern Ireland by the Northern Ireland Environment Agency, and the Secretary of State for Business, 
energy and industrial strategy for organisations whose activities consist wholly or mainly of offshore activities. The most anticipated difference between Phase 2 and Phase 3 may not be in the requirements itself, but how they are enforced. A number of organisations received enforcement notices for non-compliance in Phase 2, and they were offered an extension in recognition of the COVID-19 pandemic. By the end of 2023, it is hoped that UK businesses will no longer be struggling as a result of the pandemic, and this may mean stricter enforcement of the deadlines. However, bigger changes may be afoot, with the UK government already consulted with businesses in autumn 2022 on the incorporation of carbon emissions as a reporting requirement and for energy savings opportunities to incorporate carbon savings as well. The outcome of the UK government's consultation is not known at the time of this video in April 2022, but it is anticipated that the results and any changes to the ESOS regulations would take place within the next six months to allow organisations to take the new requirements into account in the preparation for their compliance with ESOS Phase 3 requirements. If you want more direct support and help in developing, preparing and completing your compliant ESOS energy audit, as well as submitting your ESOS notification to the Environment Agency, our environmental and sustainability consultancy One Planet Solutions has been working closely with many organisations and has already guided them and supported them through the ESOS Phase 2 and preparation for the ESOS Phase 3 process. Additionally, we've also helped many organisations submit their records to the Environment Agency through the notification process to ensure that they meet the time-based deadlines. If you need this direct guidance and assistance, please contact us for our ESOS services, which are delivered with independence, integrity and confidentiality. I hope that this episode has given you an insight into the requirements of the ESOS regulations and how they may apply to your organisation. Any questions on this episode, please leave a comment in the box below. If you want to obtain any of the resources mentioned in this episode, they're available in the description box below and also available on the emsmastery.com website. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel to ensure that you don't miss out on other episodes on environmental management and sustainability. Until then, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch other episodes by clicking on the boxes in the top and bottom right, and to subscribe to this channel, click on the link to the left. Thank you.